Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned to hear more about them later in the video. Hey there, colorists. Today, we are back tackling this page from Romantic Country's Second Tale. Now, I've never known quite how to treat these kinds of pages where there's no background, there's kind of this weird floating chapter title here in the corner, but I have an idea that was inspired by a children's book illustrator from the UK, and I'm very excited to try it out. Hello again, everyone. I hope you're all doing well amidst all this pandemic craziness. Uh, Illinois is still in the midst of home quarantine, but we are potentially opening up a little bit at the end of this week, so I'm really excited about that. But in the meantime, coloring is always a great way to kind of de-stress a little bit, to pass the time. And today we're passing it on this page. But we're actually going to be kind of flipping the script a little bit. I've actually already colored the subject matter on this page so that we are just going to be focusing on the background today because that's really where I want to experiment a little bit. So we are actually going to be using some inspiration from a UK children's book illustrator named Richard Johnson that I stumbled upon. I'm going to be putting some links to his stuff in the description. I definitely recommend checking him out. His style is incredibly whimsical. I just love his color palette. It really speaks to my heart. He's incredibly talented. And I really thought that his style kind of translated really well to some of the stuff that I struggle with on pages like this. So I don't mean to steal his style. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, really just trying to, you know, give him, you know, a little bit of kudos and some homage and, uh, you know, think it'll really lend itself well to this type of page. So the first thing I'm doing is just taking a regular pencil and I'm just using very light pressure to draw in some of my lines. And the inspiration that I'm using specifically kind of separates uh, his illustration from the written children's book words with this kind of super whimsical kind of sideways droplets. It's really, really cute. And it just creates a really nice delineation so that the words stand out against a white backdrop and that his kind of illustration just kind of, you know, looks really, really nice alongside it. It's a really, really great way to kind of treat this. And again, I'm using very light pressure here because I don't want my pencil marks to show up later. And I may even do a little bit of strategic erasing as we go, just to kind of minimize those. And we're gonna be putting in some hills, a little bit of a pathway, and some abstract tree and shrub shapes and some clouds. And again, I really like Richard Johnson's style. It's just kind of elegantly simple, but also very whimsical, which is really what I'm going for. And I'm very excited to see how this comes out. First thing I know I wanna add in here is some golden yellow and orange tones, starting with our two trees on the right-hand side. Now I'm gonna start with my lightest color and I'll create a gradient from top to bottom. Careful to overlap wherever those colors change just to help blend out that transition. And I'm also gonna be careful to keep the transition areas a very organic shape. I'm really trying to avoid those just sort of straight horizontal lines of overlap. So I'm creating like curves and kind of V shapes, you know, whatever just kind of keeps it looking natural and organic. And I'm not overlapping the same dimension between each color. You know, the first kind of transition area might be like half an inch. The next whole, you know, little area might be, you know, a whole inch. Um, you know, really just kind of play with it until you're really getting the look that you're uh, trying to achieve. And, uh, you know, just really trying to blend out those um, transition lines with, uh, with your overlaps. And I'm gonna do the second tree much the same way, but I'm going to omit the lightest color that I used previously and instead add some darker tones on the back end, which will help to showcase that these trees are similar. They're likely the same type of tree, but still different enough to give us some visual interest. Same thing here, but now we're moving into some of the smaller kind of shrub and brush shapes that we drew in earlier, and we're going to be doing these in green. Now, starting with bronze yellow, which is one of my absolute favorite colors to use, it's from the Crayola Pencil Pack of 100. I'm not sure if it's in any of the other packs, but this is definitely one of my favorites as it can skew very yellow, it can skew green. It's definitely a very versatile color. 
Then we'll build upon that with a few other greens, utilizing that same gradient approach from top to bottom that we employed on the trees. And you'll notice this one, I'm kind of doing like a little bit of a diagonal organic transition shape just to mix it up a little bit. Oh, and I forgot to mention before, I'm just using a dry cotton swab to blend, just soft kind of circular strokes to kind of push and pull some of these uh, colors together. And I'm using a cotton swab here just because I like that just kind of softer, a little bit more imperfect uh, look that uh, I think just kind of lends itself well to this whimsical style. But any blender or solvent will do. Onto the squiggly pathway that our cart is rolling on down here at the bottom. I'm going to be using some kind of beigey, golden browns and bronze tones here, isolating small areas that may get some sunshine and then darkening others that may not. And then with French gray 70%, which skews kind of more on the brown side than gray, I'm going to be adding in some shadows under the wheels of our cart, underneath the girl, and also a bit underneath her animal friends. Just to make the original artwork feel like it's part of the background, give it some weight, give it some dimension, put some, some physics in here, uh, just to make it look like it's not floating. Then I'll blend it all out. Now, just for fun, I'm going to put some of these small little sporadic kind of pebble shapes, not too many, but just enough to give us some visual interest here since a lot of our page is very, very airy. For the grass in the foreground and later on the hills kind of in the background, I'm gonna be using the same green color palette that I used on the shrubs with a few additions. Since I want it to feel very cohesive, yet really not have any trouble distinguishing between the grass and the shrubs. Again, I'm going for similar and familiar, yet still a bit distinct. And the overall approach here is just a nice, soft, flat layer of greens. The lightest color is being used where maybe some of the sunlight might be hitting. And I'm not purposefully adding in any texture. Our texture is really kind of coming from some of the overlapping of colors and the blend that we're getting from the cotton swab. Now along the bottom edge of the hill shapes, kind of top edge of the pathway, that's where I'm going to concentrate some of my darker shapes and my darker shading. Now first with a dark green, and then with that same brown toned French gray right over top, but with both of those colors, I'm using a slightly different uh, transition shape just to create a little, little bit of uh, difference between the two. So here's what we're looking like so far. I've done the pathway and the grass and the trees, and I really, really like the texture and kind of the whimsical, um, like soft effect that we're getting. I don't really know what to call it, um, but I really, really like it. And you'll notice I've also added in a little bit of shading around the shrub on the left side. I think that also just kind of helps to delineate the shrub from the grass and just gives it a little bit more weight and a little bit more sense that the shrubs are in the scene. Um, so now we are going to be moving on to the sky, the upper portion, which is really kind of where the uh, inspiration really kind of came from. And I'm gonna start with the clouds. And the first thing that I'm actually gonna do, I drew in the clouds a little bit too heavily with my pencil. So I'm actually going to use the eraser on my pencil to erase this to about 30% of what it was. I'm going to be using very light colors here. So I don't want my pencil marks to be as obvious. So erasing it down to about 30% of what it was uh, still gives me that guideline that I'm looking for to uh, color within, uh, but it's really kind of taking away that harsh outline that I didn't intend to have. I'm usually pretty heavy handed. So uh, this is this is not surprising that I'm going to have to do uh, strategically erase a little bit but no big deal so now we're at about that 30 percent it might be a little bit hard to see on camera but I can see it pretty well in person and we're just going to again use that same gradient approach just kind of my style um, and I'm going to be starting with 10 percent cool gray just a very very nice sort of cool um, gray color. I want the page itself to read as very warm, but because these are clouds, I wanted them to feel a little bit cooler in tone. So I'm using my cool gray 10% to just kind of start us off here. 
Then for my mid-tone, I'm going to be using another Crayola color called Wild Blue Yonder. It is definitely blue. It's definitely gray. It's definitely kind of a slate color. It's a bunch of things. Very, very versatile. And this is going to be that mid-tone color. It'll kind of just bridge the gap. And I'm going to be filling in the rest of the shape probably about 80% of the way. Uh, again, it's just that mid-tone, that transition between the light, cool uh, top portion gray and then another color that I'm going to be using here in a moment. All right, now I'm gonna line the bottom edge of my cloud with this thalo blue. It's actually a Blick Studio pencil that I got a million years ago. Um, sometimes you can just kind of pick these up open stock. I really liked the way that this uh, just color kind of red on the pencil wrapper. Um, and I really, really like this one. It's a really soft pencil. And I want the clouds to feel weighted. Um, you know, clouds normally are lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. And uh, so I'm just going to sort of mimic that. And I want it to be a very organic shape. I'm not just going to do a thin line that's equidistant um, along the entire bottom edge. I want a little bit of variance there. And uh, we're just going to have a soft uh, transition. But this one, it's okay. It's, it, you know, if it doesn't transition or blend out entirely, I almost want more um, delineation between the colors here. And then I'll blend it all out with my cotton swab. And just a quick note on the cotton swabs. I didn't mention this before, but I am changing the cotton swab tip pretty often. Um, definitely in between each color, you know, you don't want to use you know, a, a cotton tip that you used on your greens and then move it over and use it on your blues. There could be some color transfer there. So at the very least, I'm switching tips between colors. And if it's a big area, like on those green hills and whatnot, I might even go through one or two uh, cotton swabs. That's why I always keep a, keep a nice little, um, little vessel of them uh, right by my coloring. All right, the moment I've been waiting for. We're finally going to get to those little sideways, sort of flowy, kind of teardrop shapes that actually inspired uh, the use of Richard Johnson's illustrations on our coloring page. So very, very excited. And of course, I've been a bit heavy handed here too. So I'm just going to be using my pencil eraser to, again, just kind of bring this down to about the 30% mark until I can still see it, but uh, you will uh, just kind of let it blend out once we start using our colored pencils. All right, now I'm also going to be using some sky blues here, but I'm purposefully not using the same colors as I did on the clouds. Uh, contrary to how I did it on the shrubs, I was just a little bit nervous that the clouds would blend in a bit too much with the sky. So I wanted to use blues, but a little bit of a different tone of blue. Uh, again, just to get that delineation, the clouds are so, so cute and I did not want them to blend in. Uh, but I am essentially using the same sort of approach where I am using three different blues, kind of a light, a mid, and then a little bit of a darker color. And I am just kind of trying trying to outline the edges of our teardrop shape with the darker color. Again, my, my first blue is super, super light. And I did want to draw attention to how cool um, it, these little teardrop shapes are. And so I wanted them to stand out a little bit. So instead of kind of just doing the bottoms, I am kind of outlining uh, that entire perimeter. And I think it looks really nice. Um, and then the rest of the sky, I just kind of, again, used uh, the three colors uh, just to give a little bit of variation. But overall, it's just like a very nice light neutral sky. All right, and because I can't resist, I really, really liked how they looked on the pathway. I'm going to be taking my dark green and just creating those little dot patterns, those little pebble patterns on our green hill here. I think it's just going to add a little bit more whimsy, a little bit of cuteness. Um, again, the background is light and airy. So some of these kind of more opaque uh, dark circles just bring a little bit more weight to the page, a little bit more groundedness and a little bit of a different texture. And so I'm just going to be kind of smattering those over the page, uh, careful to stop uh, when I think it's been a bit too much and careful not to repeat the same pattern over and over again, not to do a grid, just keep it very organic. And I'm going to keep these tree trunks actually incredibly simple. They're just going to be a kind of uh, curved, like not super straight up and down, but just like a nice kind of gentle curve uh, straight line with my pumpkin orange. And here it is, the completed page. I think it came out so, so nice. It really helped me fill a void. 
uh, with how to handle some of these pages that don't have a background. Now, if you're not a super strong uh, drawer or an illustrator, some of these backgrounds can be really quite intimidating. There's so much white space. And, you know, unless you're willing to go in there and put in a whole bunch of work, um, you know, drawing in a lot of super nice uh, detail, which is good too, if you're able to do that. But this kind of approach is super, super simple, really straightforward, a very approachable kind of art form, and I think very forgiving. So if you are looking to do something similar, uh, you know, get a little bit adventurous, you know, try to do some backgrounds here, I think that this is a really great way to do that. And again, I will leave a link to uh, Richard Johnson's illustrations, uh, his website down in the description. Definitely go check him out. Super, super talented. And I just love that we used some inspiration here. And speaking of a great place to go to for inspiration, this video was sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes, hands-on projects, and a community of millions. Most of their learning modules are in 60-minute sessions, allowing you to learn on your own schedule. Now, this is the next class that I have my eyes on, Creative Writing Bootcamp from instructor and author Myla Goldberg. Now, in support of Pencil Stash and its viewers, Skillshare is offering a two-month trial of premium membership absolutely free via the link in the description. Click my special link to try it completely risk-free. You'll not only be supporting your own learning goals, but supporting Pencil Stash as well. Now, after your two-month trial, should you wish to keep the service, which I hope that you do, Skillshare is an absolute steal for only $10 per month for an amazing amount of content. So again, please take a moment to check them out via the link in the description for your two-month free trial of premium membership to Skillshare. Thanks again for watching today, guys. If you like this video, please do me a giant favor and hit the like button. It turns blue when you hit it and it makes me so very happy. Subscribe if you're new, check out Richard Johnson's illustrations via the link below, and come back soon for more adult coloring tutorials. Bye.